Yuda, this is the non-official tourist video for Canada. Enjoy! Oh, Canada is the national anthem of Canada. It was originally written by Sir Adolphe Basile Ruther uh, in Quebec, 1880. He wrote the first original version in French. He also wrote a lot of books and was a popular man in Canada. Uh, this song would be an answer to God Save the Queen from the British, but in my opinion, our song is a lot better. So uh, we play this song on schools, hockey events, and other stuff. So uh, now, let's listen to it. Hakin School is a university in Canada that are very big. The school has 21,000 students and the school is one of the biggest schools in the world. The school are rated 32th place in the world of best schools. The invention of the Canadian football, hockey and basketball is all combined to the McGill School. That's pretty cool, right? McGill School has many today famous people that have gone on the McGill School. And for example, Leonard Cohen, Ivan Goldberg, and Sir John Evans. In Canada, they have breakfast in the schools. It's many children that now have a lot of time to eat breakfast at home. So farmers in Canada donate millions of eggs every week so the children can eat breakfast in the school. Why do they donate so many eggs? That's for the protein. They need to get much protein in the start of the day and a healthy, good start of the day. In Canada, are they not supposed to say Canadian? In Canada, they have another word for a Canadian people, and that's Canuck. They also have Canadian bacon that are covered in maple syrup. That seems pretty disgusting. A double-double is not like it seems. The word I'm meaning are coffee with two creams and two sugars. Some other weird words that they are using is, for example, parkade that are meaning parking in American English, and snowbird, that are meaning a Canadian who travels south for the winter, and usually to techy parts of Florida. Language history. In Canada we have two dominant languages, French and English. We also achieved many words from native tribes. The name Canada developed from a native tribe word Kanata, which means settlement. Back in the days, France and England were two dominant powers in Europe. The Seven Years' War broke out and Canada became British territory, but the British chose to treat the French population polite, and that is why we still speak French today. Then at 1840, Canada became a union with the British, and we had to go out in war for the British. But it wasn't until 1982 Canada became their own constitution. And that is the day we received full independence and became known as Canada. Our language got a lot of words influenced by immigrants and nearby countries. We also started as a colony at first. It was hard but we got independence, but not our own language. We had a mix of French and English. Hi, I'm going to talk about some famous people in Canada. I'm, I'm going to start with the family movie Popper's Penguins. If you have seen that, you know Mr. Popper. He is actually played by the actor Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey is living in Canada. And you know Drake, the world's famous rapper? Well, he's also living in Canada. So next time you're there, maybe you will meet him accidentally in the grocery store. That's pretty cool. And do you like the song Baby by Justin Bieber? Well, if you like Justin Bieber, he's actually living right now in Canada. Do you know the best movie, Titanic, of all times? Well, you know the song of Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go? 
go on. Well, Celine Dion is also living in Canada. So in Canada, the vowel in black, for instance, it's pronounced farther back in the mouth. Canadian dialects are actually diverging from the American dialects that have experienced the shift and this despite the high levels of interaction between the two countries. Other features include Canadian racing, the most widely known Canadian pronunciation feature. Canadian racing are affects diphthongs, words such as wife, life, house, about and shout. There are also less well-known Canadian differences such as the Canadian integration pattern of four foreign sound represented by A. In words like lava, plaza and drama, the foreign A sound of the first vowel acquires the vowel in farther in American English. It's variable in British English, but has traditionally been the vowel of cat in Canada English, Canadian English. Sorry. Until fairly recently, Canadian English was a surly understanding national variety of English. The flag of Canada, or in French, Le Drapeau du Canada, often referred to as the Canadian flag, or unofficially as the maple leaf and in unfolded French for the one leafed. It's a national consisting of a red field filed with the white square added in the center, in the middle of which is featured a stylized red 11-pointed maple leaf charged in the center. It is the first specified by law for use as the country's national flag. Many different flags is created for use by Canadian officials. Government bodies and military forces contain the maple leaf motif in some fashions, either by having the Canadian sh flag charged in the can canton or by including maple leaves in the design. This typical food is of French origin. It's a meat pie that can be made of pork or cow, and that's traditional in the city of Quebec during the Christmas season. Another of Canada's most typical food, which is prepared with fried potatoes and barbecue sauce. They're prepared with fried bread, moistened it with maple syrup and topped with cream. At first sight, you might think that they're just normal pancakes, and you might be It's a sweet made with fried dough, which is given a shape of the tail of a castor from which names come from. They are made with different ingredients such as cocoa cream, apple pie, cinnamon or cream. Canadian gastronomy has influence from all over the world, especially because of the large number of immigrants from all countries in Canada, from Great Britain to France and even Asia. Canada is a multicultural country made up of millions of immigrants who came through more than 200 years of history. Canada's current immigration policy is one of the most open in the world. From exchange and university students to people from other countries moving here to find a job. Canadian people and culture have always been influenced by other countries and nations, especially by English and Americans. But France has also been influential in shaping the country, especially in the origin of Quebec. Canada is a bilingual country and all public services are translated into English and French. Canada is one of the safest countries in the world, also known for the good quality of life and being a cultural country with lots of museums, theatres, cinemas and concerts. In the summer you can enjoy many beautiful landscapes and a lot of out activities. If you are a fan of winter sports, winter in Canada is the best thing for you. Canada is a very famous place for the amount of winter sports they have. Now I'm going to talk about Canada's locations. Canada belongs to the continent North America and is the second biggest country in the world. And if you take the country Canada and compare it, compare it with the um, continent uh, Europe, you can see that Canada is bigger than Europe. And me and my group thinks that it's pretty cool because you know, Europe has so many countries including, Canada is just one only country. Ottawa is the capital of Canada with both French and English speaking people. 49% of the population speak English, 32% speak French, and 17% speak other languages. In Ottawa there are many museums and the world's longest skiing hill with a length of 7.8 kilometers that makes Ottawa one of the most populated places in the world, especially for tourists. 
The beaver is one of the most famous symbols in Canada. It represents our honor, our nation, and our glorious land. The maple leaf was declared an official symbol in 1964. Maple leaf was created by David Vaser in 1964, awaiting the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Confederation. Inspired by the colors of the maple leaves throughout the seasons, we created this beautiful symbol.